So back in 2011, the i7-2600K was released by Intel, and still, four to five years later, I am still rocking an i7-2600K in my system until today. What is up guys, Matt here from the Toasty Bros, and I'm here to do a comparison. I'm going to compare two older i7 chips, the i7-2600K versus the i7-3770K in 2016, and see if it's still viable for you to pick up either a 2600K or 3770K used on the PC hardware market. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So as I mentioned, the i7-2600K has been in my main rig for about four years now and has done so, so much for me. It's an awesome i7 processor. I picked it up a few years back and I have never looked back really. It's done really good for video editing, gaming, all that sort of stuff. I really had no desire to upgrade from the 2600K to something newer on the Intel platform until something was given to me. So we had a circumstance come up, you could say, and an i7-3770K fell into my lap, and I've realized it is on the same socket type. So I was able to transplant my 2600K out and put in this 3770K, and basically wanted to see if there was a difference and if these processors are still viable in 2016 and are pretty good for gaming or whatever you wanna do. So what I did was run a suite of benchmarks. I went through and got the 2600K, I did a Cinebench test, I also benchmarked games like Crisis 3, Battlefield 4, and Metro Last Light, all of them on maxed out 1080p settings, and then I swapped in the 3770K into the same thing, and we're gonna go over the benchmarks. Disclaimer, the processors are both overclocked to four gigahertz. I am rocking 16 gigs of RAM in this system and the graphics card is an R9 390. I tried to turn off as much anti-aliasing and resolution bump that I could to limit uh, GPU usage. I really wanted to focus on the CPU usage and pushing the CPU to its absolute limits. So 1080p was a prime resolution without bumping up too high to where it was more reliant on the GPU than the CPU. So this is why I did what I did for the testing and I just wanted to explain that. And without further ado, let's just get right into the benchmarks. Alright guys, so now that you've seen the benchmarks, you can pretty much tell that these processors are pretty much identical. So what gives? What's the point of having a 2600K and a 3770K and they're pretty much the same thing? Well, this is what I wanted to get into. This pretty much tells the story of Intel over the past few years. Intel from the 2600K line all the way up to the 6700K line really hasn't grown that much. They haven't had a huge leap. It's just a, been a bunch of incremental growing and it really is due to AMD. Like AMD has not made a pushback in a while from their 8350, which somewhat competed with the 2600K, but still didn't really compete with the 2600K all the way up to them not really even releasing anything for the past four or five years. The last time they tried to compete with them was with the 2600K, and they've really just been pushing these old, old FX series CPUs to try to compete with them, but it really doesn't work that way. So they kind of shifted to the budget tier, but AMD is starting to become known for, it's just budget options. Besides AMD, Intel just doesn't really feel the need to push the envelope. They don't feel the need to throw a giant bomb into the mix and try to make something work. Now, I'm not favoring any company either which way, but Intel is destroying AMD in CPU performance right now. No matter what AMD fanboys can say about it, in CPU performance, Intel is destroying them. They have no chance right now. Zen is the savior for AMD, and that could be a possibility, but right now, Intel, with a four or five year old chip, still has the options to play games, do video editing, do anything you want it to do at still very viable performance ratings. So, what do I say about these two chips? Well, either way, you can't go wrong. A 2600K is a great option if you can find one at a pretty decent price, and a 3770K is a pretty decent option. I would probably offer the 2600K because you can get it a lot cheaper for some reason, but the 3770K is still a viable option if you get it like I did for basically free, and you can use it in your system. So basically, what is the conclusion then? Well, either one is a great option. The 2600K is still a really awesome CPU, and if you pick it up on the used market for a 
used build and throw in a pretty decent graphics card, you have a viable gaming machine in 2016. There will be some of a CPU bottleneck because the CPU is somewhat slower on the single threaded side of things, but it still is a hyper threaded i7 with four cores, eight threads, and it's still a very, very viable option, especially for people out there who are buying used and pick up an i7 2600K on the used market and throw in, let's see, like a 970 or even a 1070 and try to play games at 1080p or even 1440p. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below. If you disliked this video, leave a dislike and comment down below what you think and what you think I should do to improve my quality of my videos. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video so much that you hit that subscribe button, check out all our other content on this channel. And I really appreciate all the support we've been getting recently. It's been really awesome. I appreciate all of you so, so much in the comment section down below. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace out.